Hi, my artists. Um, I'm coming at you today with some more printmaking. Last week we did the monoprints with the plastic baggies and the markers, and those that are coming in are amazing. Everyone's is so unique and so cool. I love all of them, and I'm saving all of your pictures that you're sending me. Um, today I have my two assistants. Say hi, girls. Hi. Cadence and Graham. So they're going to help us because Graham actually did this with me. So we're still going to do a mono print, but we're upping it a little bit because we're going to teach you how to make your own printing plate. So I'm going to go over certain things with you, um, the materials that you will need and everything, but I just want to show you what it is first. Um, so we are going to do the mono plates, uh, printing plates. You're going to be using cardboard and you're going to make, can I use yours? Thanks. You're going to be making these with tin foil and cardboard and it's kind of tricky to see but you can see it aha there it is you can see Graham made a gorilla we looked for a whole bunch of its shapes she loved the heart for the head and she made a gorilla with this and what happens is just like the mono prints we did last week where you used marker we used marker can you hold it up and so she made her gorilla and the cool thing about this is her really cool gorilla even though she did it with these colors more than once. That's the cool thing. Even though it's a mono print, which means once, you use it and you get the same design, but they're never the same exactly, which is why they're still considered a mono print. You can do series and series of them. Graham and I even mixed up the colors and we did Gorilla in Outer Space. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Oh, and there's another gorilla with just a lot of fun colors. So we are going to talk about how to make this and we also are going to do, I have a bunch of them. So this one just has some random shapes on it. That's Graham's gorilla. Yeah. If you want to get really fancy, I made one again, looking for shapes. Hold on G. And I made a, a human. All right. And it prints out like that. So that was fun. Katie hasn't done it yet. So she's super pumped to do it, right? Yes. Yes because you can get super creative. And here's one without the tin foil just yet. So again, we're using cardboard. And I just did, honestly, I used the extra bits from the other uh, mono plates that we made and put them together on this. And it just kind of made some movement and it was just organic and really nice and easy. And I didn't have to get overwhelmed or nervous about trying to make an, another person or make a gorilla or anything. You could just do shapes like your favorite shapes, hearts and diamonds and trapezoids and glue them on. So let's discuss materials. So I've been trying to use things that I know people probably have in their house. And if you've already recycled any of your cardboard, don't worry, watch the video. And if you're excited about doing it, next time you have an empty box laying around the house, don't let someone recycle it yet. Hold on to it and make art. So. One of the favorite snacks in this house right now, besides the mac and cheese that I showed you a few videos ago, are these. Guys, listen, <laughs> extra toasty Cheez-Its, we're gonna turn into extra toasty Cheez-Its because they're the best snack in the world. <laughs> right? So good. Um, I have to hide them from myself and from everybody else in this house so that we but don't eat them. you know where them. they are because yeah. you hid them. Yeah. You're I, quiet. Yeah, I, huh? I, you'll hide. I, no, I do hide them, so you can't eat them all on me. So you are going to need the following items, and then I'm going to have this, again, I'll show you in the um, when we model it. But cardboard box, and these are great because they are thinner, so they're easier to cut, which leads me to scissors. If you have larger scissors, that's going to work out well for you. If you only have the itty-bitties because that's the right size for your hand, that's totally okay because, again, this cardboard is thin, so that should work out. So... We need cardboard, we need scissors, we need glue. If you have a glue stick, that's okay, do it. It'll it'll still dry and once the tin foil's on, it's good. Oh, I forgot the tin foil. We need tin foil. Um, okay. You'll go get it, thanks babe. You're going to need a pencil if you wanna draw out your design and markers. You're going to need paper just like the mono print last time, hold on G, and a wet, sponge all right so go ahead show them what you want to show them. this is my human this is a bag and I'll, I'll want you to put it 
just like... You didn't want to make a print out of it, so you left it. Yeah, just like... And we like, hung it on the window, so it's kind of cool. Just like these, but they're not like that. Okay. All right, so thank you, Graham. So um, I'm going to show you in a different mode on how to do it, but what's going to look like is you're going to wind up cutting out shapes, whatever it is that you want to do, and I don't know if I've said it, but I'm going to tell you again. Um, you can do whatever you want. You are the artists. You are in charge of making your design. Oh, thanks, babe. Um, the only thing I am expecting from you is to be creative and brave enough. Does it matter what it comes out like? No, it's the process. It's making it. It's fun. It's being creative and exploring and making mistakes because mistakes are okay. You should be making mistakes. Um, and one more thing. Please don't stress about having to do every video that I put up. Find what you like, do it. I don't have due dates. I just want you to have a place to come see me and to just be inspired to maybe create something. I just want to show you some processes and then you go about your like go about it and make your own artwork because you're the artist. Do whatever you want. There you go. So <laughs> get out of the mini fridge. So um again, you make your own designs. And then I'm going to show you how to wrap them and I'm going to show you how to do the prints. Okay. All right, bye. Today we will need cardboard. We will also need scissors, a pencil, but we need to use some marker so you guys can see it. Glue, a sponge, markers, and tin foil. Not the heavy duty kind. Okay guys, so first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to get your box, you're going to open it and lay it flat so you can see what space you have. You need to choose a shape that's going to be your base. Like for this one, just the flat piece and that's you're going to glue everything on it. So depending on what size paper you have or what size you want to make it, you have to figure out how big yours is going to be. And then you're going to cut that down to the size that you want. Okay, so I have a piece here because I just had this left over, but I did take my cheese it box that we're going to make designs on. Now, Katie, what did we decide we were going to do? We were going to decide to do um, really cool shapes like hearts, stars, and we are going to also do some diamonds. Okay, so you guys do not have to plan out specific shapes and draw them on your cardboard if you don't want to. We just are doing this now so you can see it. You can literally, just like Matisse, you can draw with your scissors and just cut out whatever you want. So that's up to you. Okay, so we drew some shapes. This is what we're going for for this. And the next step is to cut them out. And once you cut them out, you'll figure out where you want to put them. But right now we're going to cut them out for you. Okay, guys, so I have all my pieces here, even my really wonky star. Stars are my kryptonite, everybody. Just so we're all aware, I am aware, I can't make stars without doing this method which Katie was way smarter than her mother and did that because no one's going to see it. So big deal. All right. So now I have all my pieces. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get your back and you are going to find a composition which makes is interesting to you. So you want to find something that creates movement or interest or just whatever you're doing. If you're building a robot or if you're making an animal, then you're obviously putting it into its pieces that needs to be. Um, like Katie is doing hers and she made, she wants us to be a German shepherd. So obviously you have to have these in certain spots, but for this guy, you can put this wherever you want, whatever makes you the happiest. And I'm going to have Katie do this. Katie's going to take over. Go ahead, Katie. So, um, I'm just going to put them over and maybe make some few things that you might think is an actual fun thing. Okay, so I'm going to do some fun stuff. Okay, so Katie has picked her composition. She said she kind of liked, made a little human over here, and she's got all the other shapes. So now carefully, you're going to take your glue, and you're going to flip over each piece, and you're going to glue. And the thing is, though, guys, you want to make sure the glue stays on the back. So when you flip it over, you don't want giant puddles of glue, because the... Um, when you put the tinfoil on it, it that's going to create a, a, a bump, which will be part of your print. A so you want 
<laughs> so you want to be careful. All right. Hold on. Okay, once you guys have your composition, you have to take a pause for yourself and you have to let this dry because it you can tell it still moves around right now and you don't want it to move if you're really happy with it before you wrap it in the tin foil. Okay guys, I'm gonna let that one dry but I do wanna show you how to wrap when you have a done one. So here's one that we had already, already made that's glued. So we're ready to go, nothing moves, it's all sorts of good. So this is when you need your tin foil. I need my camera to stop shaking. You want it to be larger than your your uh, print, your plate, because you're gonna wrap it around. So take a nice piece of tin foil. And you're gonna take it. And you're gonna flip it, and you're gonna put it over like this, right in the center, kind of like you're wrapping a gift. So you're gonna fold it. And I, I actually like to smush it a little bit, give it a heads up, head start. And you're going to very carefully fold it in on three sides. Now, the reason I don't do four sides right away is because it's kind of like, you know, for the parents out there, when you're rolling up an air mattress, you get all that air stuck in, so you got to make sure that vent is all the way open. So, I don't know if that's true or not when it comes to this, but it makes me feel like I'm doing a better job. All right, so I have all three sides folded, and I have this open still. I'm going to flip it around and very carefully you're going to take your fingers and you are going to find your imprints and so you can still see there's a little air step still in here so I like to push it out through that open spot it kind of helps so you are going to very carefully go around with your finger and get those edges so that you can start seeing it come through you guys see this and you're going to see all your nice edges do not, like, here's my warning. Some people, like, the first time I did it, I was like, oh, I'll use my nail and try to help it. And I wind up poking through my tinfoil. So don't do that. You could use, like, maybe an eraser, tip of an eraser, just to really get some edges defined. If you poke a little hole in it, don't worry. It'll still be fine, especially if it's around the edge, because a couple of mine I wound up doing that too, and they worked fine. But just very gently go around. Even if you have a Q-tip, that might help but your finger is perfect or an eraser tip might be good. This is all nice and soft, so I am gonna go around. So you're gonna go around all of your edges. Make sure they really pop out, especially if you have layers, like you have one thing on top of another thing. You really want that to come through in your print so you know where to color with your marker. So I'm just going around, I'm finding my edges. Okay, once you have found all your edges, and you can actually really pretty see it pretty well here. These are all my fun shapes. Fold over that top part. There you go. Now you have your plate, and you're ready to go. Ta-da! This is super exciting. The cool thing is you get to use it over and over again. All right. Yes. Okay, guys, so we have... Katie's dog, she did a German Shepherd. Graham's gorilla that she made last week, but we've been reusing it and using it. You can't even tell us that's awesome. And this one I just wrapped. Okay, so we're gonna show you what you're gonna do for the next steps. So this is what you are gonna do. You're gonna get your markers, and it works better if it's washable markers. I happen to have Crayola. You can use whatever you want, just washable is what's gonna really work, just like the mono print on the paper bag, plastic bags. So you're going to color in. You can color the background. You don't have to color the background. You can just color in the shape that you made. Um, like Graham and I did all of it when we did the gorilla. Um, and in one of mine, I just did the uh, raised elements of it and I didn't do the background, that negative space. And for this one, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to figure that out as I go along. So we're going to color all together and you can watch us color. And then I will show you the next step. Okay guys, so when I'm coloring this in, I kind of use the tip of my marker to go around the negative space or parts that were not raised, and that kind of helped push the tinfoil down even more, and then I was able to just use my marker on my side to fill in the massive, the larger shapes.
Okay, so once you're finished coloring in, you're gonna see that your markers are getting dry on there and they're tacky and that's okay. Stop shaking the table, please. And you're gonna get your wet sponge and you're gonna get your paper wet, just like the mono prints we did on the plastic bags. You have to figure out what's gonna really work best for you. Do not over soak them because then all your designs will kind of bleed in, but don't under soak them or you're not gonna be able to activate your markers. So all of our papers are wet and we're gonna start printing. Okay, I'm gonna do mine first and then the girls are gonna do theirs. So you're gonna take your paper, shiny wet side down. You're gonna put it on your print and just like the baggies, you're going to be gentle with it and kind of like roll your fingers. You should start to see your image come through. Now again, if it doesn't work out the first time, guess what? You learned what you should or should not do and you can try it again. Like I can tell, thank you G, that, oops, I moved it. I can tell some parts of my paper were a little drier than others. So one trick sometimes I do is I put the wet sponge on top of it. That kind of helps, but that also will make my colors bleed a little more and I don't like that too much, but I just want you guys to see what it looks like. So you can tell, oh, my camera is really shaking, sorry. I can see my colors coming through, which means my markers that were dry kind of now are reactivated with the water. And just like the mono, the other mono prints, you're gonna pull it off and reveal. Ooh, that's fun. Okay, I'm down. I'm into it. All right. So then you have your print. That's really cool looking. It gives it such a cool texture too. And then you'll see it got a lot of it off. But guess what? You can reuse this again and again by just getting your sponge and very gently just wiping it down. And you can use it over and over again. If you have a hole in it. That's the only that's the only thing is that your cardboard might get a little wet, but it dries. It's totally fine. All right, so then you just kind of clean it up, let it dry a little bit with a paper towel if you want, help it out, and do it again. And then you're going to make print after print, and you're going to have the same pattern, but they're never going to be exactly the same, and that is what is super cool. So the girls are really desperate to show you theirs, so they're going to go next. Here you go, Graham. Okay. Woo! Katie's super pumped. This is her first one. Graham's been doing this a lot. Yep, nice roll. Roll your fingers. Here we go. Wait till you start to see your print coming through. Nope, Katie, you moved it around. Can I roll it to the sponge? Yeah. That's it. No, you don't. Okay. I want this. Okay. Let's see how they came out, girls. Ooh, no, cool, Kate. Look at your German Shepherd. Yeah, see, no, it looks like two ears. I should be turning it this way. It looks like two ears because it moved. No, it's, oh, that did, but that's kind of cool looking. Yeah. It gives it movement. Graham, that's... let's see our gorilla. Oh, nice. This one's way different than the other ones we made. Very cool. So you definitely, we're going to have to get yours wet again, and we can try it again, too. Very exciting. Okay guys, so there's another way of doing printmaking and we did another set of mono prints and again, use it over and over again if you want and you're going to have a different outcome every single time, which is a lot of fun. So guys, totally miss you and I can't wait to see what you guys create with this. Please send me emails and don't forget your full name and your teacher's name because I have to go through a lot of them. What's up, Cade? I also think that everyone's idea should be unique because... Everybody has a different idea and a different thing to do. Yes, because you are the, the artist. artist. All right, guys. Love you. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.